Ladies and gentlemen, today, 77 of the Soft Spoken Bible in a Year series. I am so glad you are joining us, and if you are joining us for the first time, welcome. My prayer is, you will be soothed to sleep as His Word goes into your mind, will, emotions, and spirit as you sleep or relax. We will pick up where we left off today in the book of Numbers, chapter 12, verse 1 through chapter 14, verse 10, then the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, and conclude with the Eventide devotional portion from God Calling. But before we begin, sweet friend, if you do not know Jesus, this wonderful, wonderful Jesus who died just for you, and, and you would like to know Him, as your very own Lord and Savior, would you please pray the following prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, I would like Jesus to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Your word says in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 10, that if I confess out loud, Jesus is my Lord, and believe in my heart, God raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. For it is with my heart that I believe and am justified, just as if I never sinned. And it is with my mouth that I confess and I am saved. Please, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Please be my Lord and my Savior. I repent for the wrong life I have lived until now. I choose you and will live for you all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I love you. In Jesus' name, amen. You are now his child. All heaven is jumping up and down and dancing because you received Jesus into your very own heart, sweet friend. Tell someone you just received Jesus and find a great Christian church and grow in Him. He loves you and desires worship from your heart each and every day. You are so precious to Him. And now, I will ask the Lord God to bless this episode for day 77. O oh, dear Heavenly Father, Elohim, Adonai, Father God, we love you, we adore you. You are so precious to us. Thank you again for another day. I will rejoice in you, Lord, and be glad in this day that you have made. Again, I say, I will rejoice. Thank you for another opportunity to share your priceless treasure, your word, expressed in Jesus Christ. Jesus, you are on every page of the Bible. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit, for giving me your understanding and your wisdom and revelation, what you want us to glean from the scriptures today. Thank you for blessing us so we can be a blessing to others. Thank you that we all fulfill our destiny that you have for us, and we bind the destiny that Satan has planned for us. We bind and forbid that in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading us into our destinies as we continue to thirst and hunger for you through your word, worship, and prayer. Oh, Father, never take away the yearning for you in Jesus and Holy Spirit. Never take away the longing. Never take away the longing for you, O oh Father. In Jesus' name I pray, by the power of the sweet Holy Spirit, amen. The 
Book of Numbers, Chapter 12 Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Cushite woman whom he had married, for he had married a Cushite woman. They said, Has the Lord indeed spoken only with Moses? Hasn't he spoken also with us? And the Lord heard it. Now, the man Moses was very humble, more than all the men who were on the surface of the earth. The Lord spoke suddenly to Moses, to Aaron, and to Miriam. You three come out to the tent of meeting. The three of them came out. The Lord came down in a pillar of cloud, and stood at the door of the tent, and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forward. He said, Now hear my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known to him in a vision. I will speak with him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so. He is faithful in all my house. With him I will speak mouth to mouth, even plainly and not in riddles. And he shall see the Lord's form. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant, against Moses? The Lord's anger burned against them, and he departed. The cloud departed from over the tent, and behold, Miriam was leprous, as white as snow. Aaron looked at Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. Aaron said to Moses, Oh! My Lord, please don't count this sin against us, in which we have done foolishly, and in which we have sinned. Let her not, I pray, be as one dead, of whom the flesh is half consumed when he comes out of his mother's womb. Moses cried to the Lord, saying, Heal her, God, I beg you. The Lord said to Moses, If her father had but spit in her face, Shouldn't she be ashamed seven days? Let her be shut up outside of the camp seven days, and after that she shall be brought in again. Midian was shut up outside of the camp seven days, and the people didn't travel until Midian was brought in again. Afterward, the people traveled from Hatzeroth and encamped in the wilderness of Paran. Numbers, chapter 13. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send men, that they may spy out the land of Canaan, which I give to the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their fathers you shall send a man, every one a prince among them. Moses sent them from the wilderness of Paran, according to the commandment of the Lord. All of them were men who were heads of the children of Israel. These were their names. Of the tribe of Reuben, Shamua, the son of Zakur. Of the tribe of Simeon, or Simon, Shaphat, the son of Hori. Of the tribe of Judah, Caleb, the son of Jephunneh. Of the tribe of Issachar, Egal, the son of Joseph, of the tribe of Ephraim, Hoshea, the son of Nun, of the tribe of Benjamin, Palti, the son of Raphu, of the tribe of Zebulun, Gadiel, the son of Sodi, of the tribe of Joseph, of the tribe of Manasseh, Gadi, the son of Susi, or Susi, of the tribe of Dan, Amiel, the son of Gemali, of the tribe of Ashad, Zetur, the son of Michael or Michael, of the tribe of Naphtali, Nahabi, the son of Vopshi, of the tribe of Gad, Geuel, the son of Machi. These are the names of the men who Moses sent to spy out the land. Moses called Hoshea, the son of Nun, Joshua. 
Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan, and said to them, Go up this way by the south, and go up into the hill country. See the land, what it is, and the people who dwell therein, whether they are strong or weak, whether they are few or many, and what the land is that they dwell in, whether it is good or bad, and what cities they are that they dwell in, whether in camps or in strongholds, and what the land is, whether it is fertile or poor, whether there is wood therein or not. Be courageous, and bring some of the fruit of the land. Now, the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. So they went up and spied out the land from the wilderness of Tsin to Reho, to the entrance of Hamad. They went up by the south and came to Hebron, and Ahiman, Sheshai, and Talmai, the children of Anak, were there. Now Hebron was built seven years before Tzoan in Egypt. They came to the valley of Eshkol and cut down from there a branch with one cluster of grapes, and they bore it on a staff between two. They also brought some of the pomegranates and figs. That place was called the valley of Eshkol because of the cluster which the children of Israel cut down from there. They returned from spying out the land at the end of forty days. They went and came to Moses, to Aran, and to all the congregation of the children of Israel, to the wilderness of Paran, to Kadesh, and brought back word to them and to all the congregation. They showed them the fruit of the land. They told him and said, We came to the land where you send us. Surely. It flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. However, the people who dwell in the land are strong, and the cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the children of Anach there. Amalek dwells in the land of the south. The Hittite, the Jebusite, and the Amorite dwell in the hill country. The Canaanite dwells by the sea and along the side of the Jordan. Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let's go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men who went up with him said, We aren't able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. They brought up an evil report of the land which they had spied out to the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to spy it out, is a land that eats up its inhabitants, and all the people who we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, who come from the Nephilim. We were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. Numbers, chapter 14, verses 1 through 10. All the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. All the children of Israel murmured against Moshe or Moses and against Aaron. The whole congregation said to them, We wish that we had died in the land of Egypt, or that we had died in this wilderness. Why does the Lord bring us to this land? to fall by the sword. Our wives and our little ones will be captured or killed. Wouldn't it be better for us to return into Egypt? They said to one another, Let's choose a leader and let's return into Egypt. Then Moses and Adon fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel, Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, who were of those who spied out the land, tore their clothes. They spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we passed through to spy it out is an exceedingly good
good land. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Only don't rebel against the Lord. Neither fear the people of the land, for they are bred for us. Their defense is removed from over them, and the Lord is with us. Don't fear them. But all the congregation threatened to stone them with stones. The Gospel of Luke, Chapter 11 When he finished praying in a certain place, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John or Yohanan also taught his disciples. Jesus said to them, When you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day by day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we ourselves also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. Bring us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Yeshua said to them, Which of you, if you go to a friend at midnight and tell him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has come to me from a journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within will answer and say, Don't bother me. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I can't get up and give it to you. I tell you, although he will not rise and give it to him because he is his friend, yet, because of his persistence, he will get up and give him as many as he needs. I tell you, keep asking, and it will be given you. Keep seeking, and you will find. Keep knocking, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, finds. To him who knocks, it will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or, if he asks for a fish, he won't give him a snake instead of a fish, will he? Or, if he asks for an egg, he won't give him a scorpion, will he? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? He was casting out a demon, and it was mute. When the demon had gone out, the mute man spoke, and the multitudes marveled. But some of them said, He casts out demons by Beelzebul, the prince of the demons. Others, testing him, sought from him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. A house divided against itself falls. If Satan also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that I cast out demons by Beelzebul. But if I cast out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. But if I, by God's finger, cast out demons, then God's kingdom has come to you. When the strong man, fully armed, guards his own dwelling, his goods are safe. But when someone stronger attacks him and overcomes him, he takes from him his whole armor in which he trusted and divides his plunder. He who is not with me is against me. He who doesn't gather with me scatters. The unclean spirit, when he has gone out of the man, passes through dry places, seeking rest, and finding none, he says, I will 
return back to my house from which I came out. When he returns, he finds it swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes seven other spirits more evil than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. The last state of that man becomes worse than the first. It came to pass, as he said these things, a certain woman out of the multitude lifted up her voice and said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore you, and the breasts which nursed you. But Yeshua said, On the contrary, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. When the multitudes were gathering together to him, he began to say, This is an evil generation. It seeks after a sign. No sign will be given to it but the sign of Jonah the prophet. For even as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so the Son of Man will also be to this generation. The Queen of the South will rise up in the judgment with the men of this generation and will condemn them. For she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, one greater than Solomon is here. The men of Nineveh will stand up in the judgment with this generation and will condemn it. For they repented at the proclaiming of Jonah. And behold, one greater than Jonah is here. No one, when he has lit a lamp, puts it in a cellar or under a basket, but on a stand, that those who come in may see the light. The lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is good, your whole body is also full of light. But when it is evil, your body also is full of darkness. Therefore, see whether the light that is in you isn't darkness. If therefore your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, it will be wholly full of light, as when the lamp with its bright shining gives you light. Now, as he spoke, a certain Pharisee asked him to dine with him. He went in and sat at the table, when the Pharisee saw it, he marveled that he had not first washed himself before dinner. The Lord said to him, Now, you Pharisees, cleanse the outside of the cup and of the platter, but your inward part is full of extortion and wickedness. You foolish ones, didn't he who made the outside make the inside also? But give for gifts to the needy those things which are within, and behold, all things will be clean to you. But woe to you, Pharisees, for you tithe mint and rue and every herb, but you bypass justice and God's love. You ought to have done these, and not to have left the other undone. Woe to you, Pharisees, for you love the best seats in the synagogues and the greetings in the marketplaces. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like hidden graves and the men who walk over them don't know it. One of the Torah scholars answered him, Rabbi, in saying this you insult us also. Jesus said, Woe to you, Torah scholars, also, for you load men with burdens that are difficult to carry, and you yourselves won't even lift one finger to help carry those burdens. Woe to you, for you build the tombs of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. So you testify and consent to the works of your fathers. For they killed them, and you build their tombs. Therefore also the wisdom of God said, I will send to them prophets and emissaries, and some of them they will kill and persecute, that the blood of all the prophets, which was shed from the foundation of the world, may be required of this generation. From the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who perished between the altar and the sanctuary, Yes, I tell you, it will be required of this generation. Woe to you, Torah scholars, for you took away the key of knowledge. You didn't enter in yourselves, and those who were entering in, you hindered. As he said these things to them, the scribes and the Pharisees began to be terribly angry and to draw many things out of him, lying in wait for him and seeking to catch him in something he might say that they might accuse him. God calling 
Eventide, Day 77, The Real World. Blessed are they that hear my voice. Jesus said, Death to my voice, man can so often be. Live, my children, more in the unseen world, there in the contemplation of me. Your whole nature becomes sensitive to my faintest whisper. I have told you, I tell you again, the unseen world is the real world. Realize more and more as you go through this earth life that this is only a material plane parenthesis. The real paragraph, chapter, book of life is the spirit life. This point of view will alter your idea of suffering, failure, and the work of life here. It will give you a new view of death. Birth begins the parenthesis. Death closes it. Then, back to real life history. Absorb this. When you have done so, you will get that same idea about the various periods of your earth life, times of struggle, defeat, joy, failure, work, rest, success. Treat them all as parts of a parenthesis in the one eternal life of spiritual progress. And just to share with what was impressed upon me as I was sharing from Numbers chapter 12. Wow. God really does not like when we grumble, complain, or gossip about those closest to his heart. Moses, he spoke mouth to mouth, face to face, unlike any other prophets before unlike any other of his servants before, except Adam and Avraham and Jacob. Well, it was just different with Moses. And God defended Moses. The verse that really stood out to me was when it's mentioned how humble Moses was. He probably knew they were speaking about his wife, his new wife that he had just married. It doesn't say her color of skin. So his first wife, they didn't have a problem. We can only speculate. But this one, so they had a problem. And God judged them. Maybe it was just not understanding the different culture of the Kushites. I'm not sure. It doesn't say. We can only speculate. Wow. God does not like when we criticize anyone that knows his heart, that touches his heart, anyone who touches his heart. And Moses wanted Miriam delivered right away, but God said, nope, just like a parent. She should be punished for seven days, basically grounded, shut out of the camp. And she was. She learned her lesson. And this was the woman who saved Moses' life, who was there when Moses went down the river of the Nile in the basket. So she's very special to Moses and special to God, but God needed to discipline her and show her, you do not criticize the one I speak to mouth to mouth and face to face. With the Cushite woman, we don't know if Miriam and Adon were upset because she was a different culture. Maybe it was a different skin color. We weren't there, we do not know, and it wasn't written about the skin color. But they were upset because she was a certain foreigner. And we just don't know. We don't know. We could speculate all day. But what came to mind was this. God 
chooses your race. God chooses. God chooses the color of your skin. For he said, I formed you and knew you. I formed you while you were in your mother's womb, and I knew you before the foundations of the world. So, his word says that. He tells us in his word. So, he chose the color of my skin, the color of your skin. He chose, he chose the color of your skin. He made you black, if you're black. He made you white, if you're white. He made you, you, you know, I mean, he chose all the different colors were all a reflection of God. There's a variety in beauty, in his beauty, and it's holiness in his beauty that is true beauty. So this bothered God. It bothered God that there were, they were criticizing whom Moses chose to marry as his second wife. We don't know what happened to Zipporah. We don't know if she had died. We don't know. It doesn't say. But this was his second wife he had chosen. And God, who knows? The fact that God had revealed to Miriam and Aaron that he spoke with Moses face to face. Maybe Moses had already gone to the Lord about this and said, Hey, I'm going to choose this Cushite woman as my wife. What do you think? Who knows? But God was angry because he chooses, he chooses our race. And our race, no matter what it is, is beautiful to God. Even if the law of the land said that your race is not beautiful, it doesn't matter. The law of God trumps the law of the land. Now many of our laws of our land came from the Lord, but many want to destroy it as well. Nevertheless, when it comes to our skin color, God chose. God chose your skin color for his pleasure, his delight, his purpose, his plan. What a lesson for us today. Oh, Father, Father, forgive us when we have criticized anyone that we didn't understand who touched your heart. Forgive us, O oh Lord. Thank you for forgiving us because of the blood of Jesus. Now, when it comes to the book of Numbers chapter 13, what stood out to me, of course, was Caleb. What stood out to me, of course, was Moses being very detailed in how to spy out the land, how to inspect it, you know, know your enemy, basically. Know your enemy so you can conquer that land. Is it worth it? You know, God just told Moses to go spy it out. And then there were all these instructions and details of how to spy it out, how to inspect, how to know if this land is worth conquering. And most said, oh, it's too big, it's too much for us. But Caleb said, no, we can overcome this. We can take the land. It doesn't matter if they are giants. The Nephilim, the giants that came from Nephilim, some say the hybrid race, the fallen angel with the daughters of men, which is detailed in the book of Enoch, which we do not have in our Bible, but it is referenced in the New Testament. And what was impressed upon me in the Gospel of Luke chapter 11 was how the Lord was not afraid to say the truth in love. And he was not afraid to explain how Satan could not be divided against himself in his house stand. That Jesus cast out demons out of the compassion from God with the finger of God. And he wasn't afraid, even though he was at the table of the Pharisees and scribes, he wasn't afraid to correct them to try to get them to be reconciled to the Father, for them to repent like King David repented in Psalm 51 and say, O oh, Father, create in me a clean heart. No, he had to confront them, for they had hindered so many from coming to the Father. They had hindered so many with their hypocritical ways. And Jesus was not afraid to speak the truth 
for he was God. He is God. Yesterday, today, and forever. He knew their thoughts. He was El Roi, the God who sees me. He saw them. He knew their thoughts. And he spoke truth. Truth has a certain ring to it. He spoke truth in love. But they, in their rebellion, resented it. Instead of falling on their knees, repenting. And so, until next time, blessings to you.